Good morning. Welcome to Community Church at Cedar Springs, where everybody is somebody. Good morning. Listen, we got a few announcements to make. Uh, ladies, Monday night or Monday morning Bible study will start back this coming Monday, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, July the 6th at 930. And then uh, bring your own Bible and your own beverage, right? <laughs> bring your own Bible and your own beverage. And then July the 5th is going to be the first Sunday we're going back to one service. So that will be at 1030. So that we're going back to the one service. All right. Guys, this morning, if you look up on your screen, you'll see it says, but the time is coming, indeed, and is here now, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father's looking for those who will worship him that way. I love the last service where you kind of had that, Pastor Charles had that in that last part of what he said. He said, in spirit and in truth. So, you know, we're going to come before him. The song is called, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. So let's just enter into worship. Join me. Would you guys stand and let's worship this living God? Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are. Find in me thine all in all. 
Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, He washed it white as snow. change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it by the stone. And when to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed me white as snow. I got news for y'all. On my behalf, he had to do a whole lot of washing. But he's able to do anything but fail. Amen. Amen. Again, good morning. To each of you all that I haven't spoken to, I, I hope I've made my rounds and said hello to everybody this morning. It's good to see each and every one of you. I am glad, glad, glad that you're here with us this morning, and I praise God. Now, I'm going to tell you all this. For those of you all who thought we were going to be going to baptize, it has flooded up here, and we can't get down to the creek. So we are going to go next week. So we're going to do a double next week. We're going to do a baby dedication, and then we're going to go to the creek. And we're going to baptize, and we are looking forward to it, and we're praising God for every opportunity and for every blessing. It's just good to see you all this morning, and I'm glad, glad, glad that you were able to make it to be here with us today. Uh, for those of you all who have your Bibles, who are carrying your word with you, if you would turn to Luke chapter 8, starting with verse 22. Luke chapter 8, starting with verse 22. Please bear this in mind, and, and when you have found it, if you would please stand for the reading of God's word. Um, 
Please bear in mind that next week there won't be any 9 o'clock. Uh, there won't be any uh, uh, early service. We're, we're going to go back to our normal time, which is at 1030. So uh, after, after our 1030 worship experience, we will be going to the creek, Lord willing. We will be going there and we will be baptizing. Amen. We are looking forward to it, and we're just praising God for it ahead of time. You know, God can do anything but fail. He's making a way for us even when we're not even thinking about it. And we are just thankful, and we just bless his holy name for what he's able to do and how he's able to do it. Amen. It's good to see you all this morning. It really is. And I just want you to know this. We want you here. Every time the doors open. Billy, I thank you for that last song. I never heard that part of that song, but I like it. I like it. I like it. That was good. Amen. Amen. Job well done. Luke chapter 8 verse 22 reads, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake, and they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the wind and the water, and, and they obey him. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for just being God and being God all by yourself. Lord, we thank you for loving us in spite of us. Lord, I thank you for all those that are here this morning. Now, I pray your blessings upon them all. Lord, that you'll bless and keep us. You'll lead God and direct us, and you'll deliver us. Lord, I pray you remove me and let your presence reign. Father, let your spirit take over right now. And Father, we will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you would be seated just for a few minutes, I want to speak to you from the thought, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Can you imagine? Here we are sitting in here today, and it is storming like all get out outside right now. Who knew that this would all take place and that this would all fall in place the way it has? Nobody but Jesus. And what a great analogy. All we've got to do is look out the door this morning and we can see the situation that is going on on the outside. And we come to the realization that he's still in control. He's still watching over us and he's still making a way for us even in the midst of a storm even in the midst of what may be going on right now he is still in control even in the midst of dangerous circumstances dangerous circumstances circumstances that we, we you know sometimes we find ourselves in some lowly situations and some bad things may happen in our lives we find ourselves in some circumstances that we really don't like but you know what it, the tide turns when the circumstances get dangerous Amen. It's, it's one thing to be riding in a car with somebody who's driving too fast, but it's another thing to be riding in a car who's, uh, with somebody who's driving too fast and they're drunk. That's when it gets to be dangerous circumstances. Amen. You got to look at the situation. You got to look at what's going on in your life. You've got to look at what's taking place around you at all times in order to get a good understanding of what is really going on. I want you all to get this in your heads this morning. As it is storming outside, imagine if you were out on uh, that lake right now. 
Imagine the thought of being out there right now with all that's going on just right around here. This morning between the, uh, the time that we got started at 9 and, and, and up to right now, it poured here. I called my wife. I said, baby, I don't know where you're at, but you better watch out because it is bad coming down the road. And she was in Warren County, and she said, well, it's not doing anything here. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That's the way things happen. That's the way things start out. Look at, look at me. Listen to me right now. Listen to me. When, when they launched out, nothing was happening. Everything was fine. There was no issues. When they launched out, everything was smooth sailing. Everything was calm. Everything, all they had to do was row, row, row your boat from one side of the lake of, of the Sea of Galilee to the other. All they had to do was get over to the east side is where they were headed. But unfortunately, we start out in calm waters. We start out in calm situations. We start out with things going our way, but it don't always end up that way. Amen. But, but let, let me show you something right quick. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. Y'all listen to me. If you go with Jesus, you got a guarantee. You hear me? You see, my problem is I've launched out too many times on my own. Let me tell you something. That's a shipwreck getting ready to happen. I'm fixing to go down. <laughs> it ain't going to work out right when I do it on my own. But the sweet part is I learned my lesson. I learned that my dependence, I learned that my help, I learned that my all in all is based on nothing but God, Jesus, and the blood that he has shed for me, has made a way for me, and he is keeping me daily through the presence, the power, the love, the understanding, the comprehension of the Holy Ghost. By him, I'm able to make it. With him, I'm able to make it. Without him, I ain't going to make it. And I ain't going to make it well. Amen? Amen. Come on, let me, help me paint this picture right quick. Y'all look at this for a minute. Let me take you back to Jesus' time for just a few minutes. Here we are. We're at the Sea of Galilee. Jesus has been preaching all day long. It, it got so thick. It got so, it, there were so many people there that finally he hired a boat. He said, hey, bring that boat over here. The boat came over. The, the, the captain of the boat came over and he brought it over and Jesus got on the boat. And he stood and he used that boat as his pulpit. As he used that boat as his pulpit, he was able to preach and teach all day long. Right there. No problems, no issues. Until he said those famous words. Let's go over to the other side. Let me tell you something about the other side. If I go to the other side on my own, I may not make it. But here's the difference. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Because Jesus said, let's go to the other side. That's not just a, 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 a saying. That's a command and a promise. It's a command because he gave it. It's a promise because if he starts out with you, he's going to be with you in the end. What happened? Along the way, a storm arose. How did the storm get there? Well, I'm glad you asked. I want you to understand something. The Sea of Galilee sits 600 feet uh, below sea level, and there's mountains that raise up way above it on three sides. The, the, the Sea of Galilee, it's just down there. The sea is nice and warm on its own circumstances. Everything is good with it on its own circumstances because it's just a nice place to be. The problem is, is the, is the winds that, uh, that crop up from the other side of the mountain. You ever notice that you get a lot of problems from the other side of the mountain? <laughs> huh? Every time you look around, something's happening on the other side. And what happens? It comes to your side of the mountain. The wind comes blowing in. Here's the issue. And, and let me get me, me, meteorologist on you for just a moment here. As the wind comes in from the ocean, it goes up 
and travels up the side of the mountain. As it gets to the top of the mountains, there's snow on the top of the mountains, even though it's summertime down in the valley. Because there's snow on top of the mountain, the air is automatically cooled at the top of the mountain. As it comes down on the other side of the mountain, the cool air comes down to the sea. As it reaches the sea, it meets the warm air that is down at the sea level, which is 600 feet below. And as it meets that air, guess what? When warm air meets cold air, there is a reaction. You get a storm. You get a good storm when it meets. And because it met, that's what took place. As they rode out, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes the storm. All of a sudden, here comes the rain. All of a sudden, here comes the wind. All of a sudden, the waves are dashing the ship back and forth and back and forth like some of our lives. Come on, help me out here. Y'all don't, don't get quiet on me now. Every day of your life ain't been smooth sailing. There's been some issues that have taken place in your life and there's still some issues that are taking place in your life right now that the wind has blown, the waves have come and if you ain't careful, your whole boat is full of water and you don't know what to do. Well, maybe not for y'all, but I didn't. But I do now. I got slick. I got just like the disciples. I went to the back of the boat where Jesus was asleep. Now, something I want y'all to get. I want y'all to get this real quick. It don't matter if Jesus was awake or if Jesus was asleep. He's still in control. <laughs> it doesn't matter if he's taking a nap or, 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 or what he may be doing. He's still in control of everything. That's why you can rest assured. That's why you got blessed assurance. Because you know beyond the shadow of a doubt. When we have faith in him. When we know that he is in control. When we realize that he is in charge of our life. And he is working. He is moving. He is in charge and doing all he can. Everything is going to be all right. Amen baby. Thank you KJ. Listen to me. Listen to me. They went to Jesus and said, Master. Now, if you notice, Luke was right there. Luke, Mark just says they shook Jesus and woke him up. Luke says that they said, Master, because Luke was right there. Luke, Luke, Luke said, Master. And then they said it again a little louder. Master. And Jesus got up. That's right, baby. Jesus got up. And, and, and here's, here's the part that I like about this. He didn't have to do a whole lot. He just told everybody to hush. Wind quit blowing. Waves quit dashing. And all of a sudden, everything's at peace. Everything's calm. Everything is tranquil. Everything is easy going. Here's what I don't understand about us. It's the same thing that, that happened with the disciples. Why is it that we don't have enough faith to just say, Master, take care of this? Why is it that we, we, we can't just allow him to move and super move in our lives and say, Master, you know what? I can't do this. You're going to have to do it for me. I've got to turn it loose. I've got to give it over to you. I've got to give over my bad uh, relationship. I've got to give over my bad finances. I've got to give over my bad children. I've got to give over everything to you, Lord. I've got to turn it over and let you handle it because I can't make it work. All he did was say, hey, everybody hush. And everything got quiet. Now, my issue here is not with his action. My issue is with the reaction of the disciples. Number one, let me go back and paint this picture for you. Look, 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 look right quick. They are on the boat. If y'all remember, I said in the beginning that Jesus gave a command and a promise. He said, let us go to the other side. That 
command and promise. Because if he said it's going to happen, I promise you it's going to take place. And because he said it, it happened. Now, just because you start out this way and just because you make it doesn't mean that there's not going to be some turmoil in the middle of your situation. There's going to be some rocky days. There's going to be some issues that are going to come about in your life. Nobody, no Christian, no Christian has all smooth sailing. If you, did, if you do, if everything is always going well and going your way, you better check who you're working for. Because our days aren't promised to be smooth sailing. We're not. Okay, all right, let me go back and explain something to you. A test had to take place. Jesus had been preaching all day. He had been illustrating, and he had been, they, the disciples had seen miracle after miracle after miracle take place. He had done so many different things. And the, Jesus gave them the opportunity by faith to say, okay, I see you got it. This storm was supposed to be a got it moment. In other words, as, as the storm raged, they were supposed to be able to say, Lord, I know you're going to see us through. Instead, they running over there hollering, Jesus, we, it looked like we're going to die. We laugh at them. We make fun of them for doing that. But in actuality, isn't that us? Don't we do that same thing? Don't we, don't we question? Let me say this. Our fear causes us to question our faith in Jesus Christ. Our fear causes us to question our faith. And it shouldn't do it. Amen? Because if he brought you through one thing, what makes you think he won't bring you through the next? If you keep walking with him, it, the storm may be raging. The wind may be blowing. You, your boat may be full of water. But what makes you think he ain't going to fix it? He fixed it before. The last time that you went through this, he was right there and he took care of it. Don't you know the same God will take care of you this time? He's going to see you through. You've got to trust him. You've got to trust him. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what may take place, we have to trust him because he's all we've got. I, I don't care how much money you think you got. I don't care how, how good looking you think you are. I don't care how many friends you think you have. We, we, we are still in the middle of a, a, a virus or an epidemic with this virus. And rich people are dying left and right. Uh, people are being made, uh, th th their bodies are being transformed and, 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 and being made or uh, being made sick and, and, and the people that have, have never been sick before are being sick right now. And, and that's all I'm trying to say to you. You've got to look. We don't really have any control but Jesus. That's the only hope and the only help we have is in Jesus. He's covering us, he's watching over us, and he's delivering us daily. So while you're in your boat, while you're trying to get to the other side, because you've got a purpose. You see, Jesus would not have them go to the other side if it had not been a purpose in them going over there. Amen? They had a job to do on the other side. You and I have jobs to do. That's why we are on our way somewhere right now. There's somebody in your life that you need to be witnessing to. There's somebody in your life that you need to let your light shine around them so that they can see what God is doing in your life so that they can be blessed in their life. And they can't be blessed if you don't show up. You've got to show up. I know the circumstances are rough. 
I know the issues are hard to get along with. I know that you're having to struggle. I know that things just don't look right right now. But I serve a God that will get you to the other side. You've got to trust him and depend on him daily. I, look, y'all, let me tell y'all something right quick. If today be your last day on this side, you made it. But if tomorrow comes and you're still here, you've still got work to do. There's no days off in this Christian journey. Every day. Every day. We're working for him. Every day. We've got to be about his business. Every day is a day to witness. Every day is a day to tell somebody about Jesus. Every day is a day to let your light shine. Every day, is, you can't start your day without getting on your knees praying and asking him to move in your life. You've got to have him working in your life. He's your answer. That's what the... And I still, y'all, help me for a minute. Now, we believe and have never had or have never visually seen Jesus. Amen? But we believe. Amen? What about these disciples? They have been walking with Jesus. And they have been right there with him. And they're more scared than we are. It's going to happen to every one of us. That's all I'm trying to say. You may have faith, but your faith is going to get tested. Every one of us, our faith gets tested. And there's times every one of us we, will fail that test. But all I'm saying to you today is call on him. Call him. And let him work in your life. Let him work in your life. You, you know, I, I want it better for everybody. I want everybody to get it. I want everybody to be about his business. I want everybody to know, understand, and comprehend that he is God. And besides, he, that, there is no other. But, 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 but sometimes we, none of us learn at the same level. All of us have to learn at our own pace and learn at our own level. But you and I, if you think that you got it and somebody else don't, it's not your job to criticize, but it's your job to encourage. It's your job to tell them, come on, we're going to make it. Come on, we're going to get our way through this. Come on. Everything is going to work out. Come on. You know, we need some, I need some come on Christians. I, 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 I need you to step up and say, you know what? I, I know that you can't see where I'm going, but I'm following him. And as I'm following him, you need to grab him and say, come on. We're on our way to glory. We're on our way to a better place. We're on our way home. And I, I don't know when I'm going to get there. But I know I'm going to make it. All I've got to do is keep trusting him. Keep depending on him. Keep leaning on him. Glory to God. He's got the answers. He'll calm the storm in your life. If you'll just let him. Today, if you don't have him in your life. Today is your day. Today is your opportunity. To get him in your life. As the invitation is extended, Jesus came, gave his life, died on the cross that every one of us would have a right to eternal life. They, gave, they took him and hung him high and stretched him wide. He hung his head and then he died. But he didn't stay dead. The records will tell you that he didn't stay dead. Three days later, he got up and he's got all power in heaven and earth in his hands. Because he got up, I'm going to get up. Because he got up, you're going to get up. Because he got up, those that have gone on before you, you're going to get up. You, you, it, I, I tell you, everybody, holler, I want to see grandmama. Look, grandmama going to make it. I want to see Jesus. I want to tell him thank you for dying for me.
I want to tell him thank you for making a way for me. I want to tell him thank you that, that, that he got across that sea and, 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 and what he says is a promise and a command at the same time. And just like he did it for them, he'll do it for us. I just want to tell him thank you. Because Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. Sin left a crimson stain on me. But he washed me white as snow. Praise be to God for what God is able to do in our lives. I don't know about you, but if it be my last day, it is my best day. Because it's my day in Jesus. And I'm going to smile and tell somebody about it. If you do not have Jesus in your life, today is the day. Tomorrow is not promised people are dying young and old I'm just waiting on him because I know he's going to see us through now now, if you, if, if, if you are just out here and you're going to this church and that church I invite you to just make this your church because we need you here and we are, are, are growing we are moving forward and we are trusting in God that's all we got there's no big eyes or little U's. It's just us. And we're trusting in God to see us through. If you don't have a church, if you just need prayer this morning, you've got some things going on in your life and you, ain't, you can't make it on your own, well, come on and get in the boat. We're going to the other side. And, and, and if you need to pray, we'll pray with you and pray for you. Because we, we're in the boat. We're going to the other side. We know that things are going to get better later. Yeah, but, but we've got to endure some things in our life but we don't have to endure them by ourselves you see for those of us who are saved for those of us who know God for those of us who are encouraged day in and day out by the word of God our job is to encourage somebody else if you need encouragement this morning come on and we'll pray with you I give God the glory for what he's able to do I know we can trust him. For those of you who are listening, wherever you may be, I just pray that you have received this word. And it will be a blessing to you. God bless you this morning. Heaven smile upon you is our prayer. As the invitation is extended, if you would please stand. You can join me at the altar. I'm going to pray.